Okay, so I had my subscribers send in some questions for you group of girls. Um, so I just want you to give your honest answer. Um, it's a mix of a ton of different things. So there's pretty much everything in here, um, but just be honest. Okay. Okay, so number one is your opinion on men's body hair. Like, what's my preference and like, what do I think of yes. it? Yes. So, I feel like I don't really have a strong opinion on mm -hmm. men's body hair. And I also like when men don't have a strong opinion on women's body hair. Like it should be your choice. Yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. I don't think anyone should care. I feel like people do have preferences. There's no stopping that, but mm -hmm. I've never been bothered by it. So is this like leg hair, arm hair, or is this like facial Everything. hair? Everything. Personally, I like dark hair on men. Uh -huh. um, I like, you know, leg hair I think is good. And a man who has like no leg hair, like it's kind of odd, but yeah. it's not their fault, so whatever. But Better a guy doesn't than... need to go out of his way to shave his legs. Oh God, no, <laughs> that would be really concerning. I actually feel like this opinion changed recently. Okay. <laughs> I used to like kind of not be huge on like tons of body hair, but I recently talked to a guy that did have a lot and I was like, Kind of give me like Greek god vibes. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when you talk to someone who has something that you thought you weren't into. Yeah. And then you know that person, you like that person, you're like, oh, maybe I'm kind of changing a little bit on this. Right. Who knew? Yeah, and you could warm up to it. Like it's like if someone pulls something off versus someone who doesn't. Yes, for sure. Like if we're talking below the belt, I think as long as you're keeping things clean. Oh yeah. Then that's Jeez, yeah. totally fine. But yeah, but like chest, back, arms. Like, yeah, whatever. I think that, yeah. We all grow hair differently. I think yeah, that's fair. It's genetics. Okay, number two. What are the best places, in your opinion, to go on a first date? So I kind of feel like for a first date, to take the pressure off, something that's like quicker almost like just getting drinks and just getting coffee mm -hmm. versus like a full dinner date like that would be my preference because i feel like there's less pressure and it's like a shorter date for sure and then you know like if you want to like go somewhere else for drinks afterwards like you can continue if the vibes are going well but right right but you're not like locked into a couple hour long like fancy dinner date if you know that you don't like this person. <laughs> yeah, it's like more casual, not as formal. And you know what's so funny is I've seen so many TikToks of girls saying like they would never accept a coffee date or a drink date for the first date and I'm like, I would rather do that a million times more than go on a fancy dinner date with someone I've never met before. Yeah, I don't want to, that, this sounds terrible, but like I don't want to be trapped into a full dinner if it's no. like terrible. No, and you and you you pretty much know within the first like, I don't know, 20, 30 yep. minutes if you're feeling it with that person. So yeah. to be locked in even longer, no thank you. Um, I think that the traditional dinner or lunch or coffee is a good one or mm -hmm. a hike I've been liking recently. Yeah. Uh, the thing I like about a hike is if you're kind of, you don't, you haven't talked to the person a lot beforehand. Yeah. You have more of an out if things aren't going well. That and is true. And you're not stuck there to eat the food and then feeling bad if they pay for you. 100%. You're just out and about and you can be like, hey, I gotta head out. It was free. If maybe it's, yeah, if maybe no it's not feelings. going well. That's or it does go well. That's a good point. I think that's like an interactive date too where like if you go to a museum, there's things to look at. If you go on a hike, mm -hmm. there's things to look at. You're yes. you know, doing something. So it's a little bit different than just sitting there. I feel like it's a lot less pressure. Right. Yeah, you're not face to face forced to have a conversation. Like yes. you can have a conversation if it flows. Yes. But it's not as awkward. But sometimes it doesn't. So I personally think doing something together besides, so going out to dinner is an easy option, mm -hmm. but it makes you both nervous because you there's a lot of pressure you're sitting across from the person staring at them yeah eating sometimes eating in front of people like where they're staring I at each other cannot yeah it's so uncomfortable and then you feel like you have to order something specific that's easy to eat and then you're like worried about what they're going to think of your ordering option or if there's and, something in your teeth yeah so there's a lot of reasons why that's not always the best first date um, I think doing something together that's like fun and a little bit competitive, like you could go to like top golf or you could go axe throwing or you could do yeah. something like that. That's like, you can kind of see someone's competitive side and like mm -hmm. if they like to do that kind of thing, if they're open to trying something new, if they've never done it. Yeah. Um, and it gives you like an icebreaker and it's, For sure. it gives you something else to talk about. Well, and it's interactive too. Yeah. So you can still get to know each other without interrogating each other and staring at each other awkwardly for an yeah, hour. Yeah, like a job interview or something. Yeah. That's a good point. Thoughts on men in flip-flops or slides? Can it be fashionable or just stop it? It can be fashionable to mm -hmm. me. Um, I wouldn't wear like 
Adidas. Well, actually, no, there are some cute Adidas slides. <laughs> it depends on what they are. If they're like the Under Armour, you know, like Velcro The ones from high school. No, yeah. yeah, no. But I think that you can make flip flops and slides look cool. It depends on your personal style for yeah. sure. And I think also what you pair it with. Yeah. I don't like flip flops unless you're like kind of by the water or the beach or the pool, but. If you live somewhere tropical, then I think that's also different. Like, yeah. if you live in Hawaii, you're probably gonna wear flip-flops more than a guy that lives in Ohio. Right. Only at the pool or the beach, it just doesn't look good. Otherwise, whether you do like socks or no socks, I just don't like it. Agreed. And most guys aren't getting pedicures, so I don't wanna see your feet. No, 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 yeah. Slides can work um, if, they're, if it's done right. Um, I don't think it can be fashionable. I think that if you're going to the beach or if you're home or just going to a friend's house or something, fine. Like, mm -hmm. I get it. And like I said before, girls have an easier time with that because there's a lot more fashionable options. So yes. I think it's better. But for men, um, I think if you're trying to put together an outfit and you end it with a flip flop or a slide, you just ruin the whole outfit. So mm -hmm. I think it's fine to own them and wear them, but I wouldn't wear them in a serious way or especially not on a date. For sure. Okay, what are your thoughts on tattoos? I like tattoos, like they don't have to have tattoos, but I like it if they do. Like I think sleeves are so cool. I think so too and honestly, when I was younger, I hated tattoos. I remember my boyfriend got a tattoo and didn't tell me and I freaked out. <laughs> like I was so upset and like you ruined your perfect skin, but now I'm like, I think they look great. Yeah. I've seen so many guys really pull it off. Mm -hmm. So that might be one of those things that changes the older you get. I don't know, it yeah. was for me at least. Just a personal thing, I've seen some bad tattoos and it hurts, but like, yeah, if I think cool, just be picky cool. about where you go to get them. Yeah. Because that's on you forever and laser removal is very expensive. I know, it's so like insane to me. People just go to the first person on the first open availability. They're like, I'm gonna go get a tattoo today and then oh like, my God. get it. I could and never. Yeah, I wanna do like research. I have a tattoo oh. this big on my arm and I'm still like, oh God, did I go to the right person? Okay, tattoos, yes or no? Yes. I already knew you were gonna say <laughs> um, I, there's nothing wrong with not having any. Like some girls like pr need, like they want a guy that specifically has a lot of tattoos and they seek them out. Yeah. Um, I don't really care either way. It's totally, it's a huge decision. So it's a personal preference and yeah. I have no problem with not having them. But um, having them, I think it definitely adds a little bit of something more interesting and attractive about someone. Yeah. Okay, next question is, what are your thoughts on different body types? What do you prefer? Personally, just someone that like takes care of themselves a little bit like and is active mm -hmm. um yeah but i'm not necessarily like i'm not really a muscle person i mean if you have them that's cool i've never been one to go after muscly guys yeah i think i've said this before it's kind of like a lifestyle like gym thing which i am not on right now <laughs> i wish i was but i'm not <laughs> so um but yeah i don't i don't really discriminate i can't think of anything as long as you're taking care of yourself so my theory on body types is that you should, so you can like, okay, so I, I think most women would say that they like a man who's fit, mm -hmm. okay? But like, if you're looking for someone to be in a relationship with, or you're looking to date around, I think you need to keep your expectations realistic. Mm -hmm. If you're not like a supermodel, then don't expect to get a supermodel. Thank you. The dad bod thing's kind of like in, again, it's like acceptable. And I'm, I, I'm kind of on board with that because most women don't feel like they're in the best condition of their life ever. No. You know, so so why, you know, put so much pressure on a guy to be jacked all the time? I think as long as you're taking care of yourself yeah, and you're and, healthy, mm -hmm. we're good to go. I like muscular guys. Um, not too chiseled, though. Like, like bodybuilder type? Not, yeah, not bodybuilder not type. Yeah. But like a good balance in between. Like they lift. Yeah. I like to work out, so... That's always a good initial sign just based on looks. Oh, for sure. Like, if that's something that you are really into. Yeah. Ha especially with the gym scene, I feel like if you're someone who really likes to work out, it's very hard to be with someone who's not into that. Right. Like, that's exactly. a lifestyle type of thing. Yeah, that's a big, like, non negotiable, I'd mm -hmm. say, is they have to be fitness, active, yeah. like, working out. Okay, number six, what is the best date you've ever been on and why? So my boyfriend and I's first date, we went out to dinner mm -hmm. and just had like so much fun that like we like continued the night. Like we went out and like got drinks with friends. Mm -hmm. So 
I feel like it was just like honestly just like having good conversation it was like natural and easy and then we ended up like doing something else after that was unplanned so kind of like spontaneous that's a good one too that same thing happened with me and my boyfriend on the first date we met for brunch and then we ended up hanging out the rest of the day Aww. and it was like so spontaneous like that was what made it memorable yeah that you like liked each other enough to keep going on the date mm -hmm. something simple that um, I, we did once is it, this isn't a first date but this is just like a date That's that okay. I had and we it was so simple it was like recently we went to get ice cream after we went to dinner and then we mm -hmm. went down to the beach and watched the sunset and Aww. like skipped rocks and it's so like juvenile sounding but it was so simple and it was so fun it was something different than just going to dinner and going home or right. just sitting at home watching a movie together mm -hmm. it was something a little bit fun and like different and we could go somewhere else and we walked around for a while and we talked about some stuff that we you know like joked around and just had a fun time so yeah keeping it simple but also doing something outside of what you do every single day that's really all girls want uh best date i've ever been on so in the context of what we did not necessarily the person but it was okay. skydiving <laughs> oh my god for a first date it was like a second or third. Okay, that's still pretty, that's early on enough to count. Oh my yeah, God. It was fun. You're like up in the plane, like, what's your mom's name? Like, <laughs> I've never met yeah. you. That's crazy. We didn't learn much about each other on the way up. Okay, um, oh, the worst date you've ever been on. I don't have any horror stories, I don't think. I I've, was in a six year relationship until like a year ago, so I've only been single really Holy for crap. a year. Oh my God. But I did have a fun, I do have a funny story that can, Suffice. Okay. So I was on vacation with some friends and I met a guy at a bar and he asked me on a date like later that week uh -huh. and we were there for like a month so the, I was like I guess I'll go mm -hmm. and my friends were like Hallie it would be so funny I've always wanted to do that thing where your friends follow you on your date. <laughs> And they like watch you? So I was like, oh my God, okay, sure. Oh so my God. I dropped them off across the street. It's, it's at like this outlet mall. Uh -huh. I drop them off across the street and then I drive, I go meet up with a guy, I'm on the date. They come in and they're sitting like two tables over. Oh my God, and he has no idea. <laughs> Thank, yes, and he still never knew. Thank God I couldn't see them or I would have lost it. Oh my God. <laughs> but they're like sending me Snapchats. Like I can hear them laughing. <laughs> I would not have been able to take that. I would have been laughing. Way it too was hard. so funny. Oh wait, I did go on a really bad date once. Actually, I'm I'm going back. I went on a date with this guy, and we went to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And he didn't make a reservation, and their wait was like an hour and a half. And we were both like 18 at this point. Okay. And so I'm like, okay, what do we do now? And he was all stressed. And then his mom called him and was like, you need to come home right now. And he was like, we're getting dinner. And she was like, no. And then I had to go home, and it was just so. It weird. sounds awful. Yeah, I was like, why didn't you like ask her first? I hate when people put you in situations like where they didn't ask their friends if you could come or like their family. And, and then, then you're there, and the parents are mad. Like mad. You're there, and you're like, ah. Uh, like, I just showed up, okay? Right? I was told that this was totally cool, mm -hmm. and it's not. So that would be a really bad experience, yeah. and it was. So yeah. Just make sure everyone's cool with everything first and make reservations. Guys, yes. make reservations. If you know you're going on a date, call ahead. Make sure you can get in because mm -hmm. it's embarrassing. Yeah. I had a guy take me on a date to a zoo, which I think is like a cute idea, but it was when like Pokemon Go was popular and he was playing Pokemon Go the whole time. And the reason he took me to the zoo was because there was like certain Pokemon there that you couldn't find anywhere else. Stop. <laughs> Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, guys, take notes. <laughs> Don't be like that guy. That's awful. Okay. Um, do you prefer guys with shorter hair or longer hair? I like shorter hair, but like some like volume on top, but shorter on the sides. Yeah. Um, so like bro flow is the longest we're going. Yes. I think yeah. so too. Shorter. Shorter. We've already talked yes. about it. <laughs> um, I think it just depends on your facial features and Stuff like that. I, I do like a little bit more hair though. Mm -hmm. I think no hair or buzz cuts and stuff is look can look really cute. I just haven't personally dated anyone with them, so I don't know. But I yeah, haven't either, yeah. Everyone just looks different with different things. It's whatever suits you. I think yeah, I think it's more about what looks good on you versus yeah. like trying to have a hairstyle that you think someone right. will like. Like just rock what you like and what you think looks good on you. Yeah. Favorite fashion trend for men at the moment? I like, honestly, when they just have nice jeans, a simple top, and then 
either dressier tennis shoes or just shoes that work with it. Just that like simple vibe is probably my favorite. Yep, 100%. I totally agree. I think the basics make the best outfits. Yeah. And sometimes guys feel like they need to be extra in order mm -hmm. to look good and that is so far from the truth. I just really like the white sneakers on guys. I feel like there's so many ways they can wear them, so that's probably my favorite trend, I would say. I like that one too. I think that one will stick around for a while too. It's mm -hmm. been around for a while now, but I have a feeling it'll continue. There. So I was thinking about this and I was like, if this is not in style, Courtney's gonna roast me. <laughs> but I really like when men wear the button down t-shirts with like a subtle pattern. A collar, no, I like collar, those. Like button down. Yeah, like the Cuban collar shirts too. Yeah, like those are so simple. Like you can wear them with shorts, you can wear them with long pants, you mm -hmm. can wear them for all kinds of occasions. And I just think they look like you put in a little bit of extra effort than just yep. a t-shirt, even if you didn't. 100%. So. And you roll the sleeves up? Oh, yeah. Chef's kiss. <laughs> Love that. Um, what is the biggest lesson about dating or relationships that you feel like you learned the hard way? Or really just, it could be anything. The most important thing is like, once you have that first problem, if they're not willing to talk to you in an, a mature matter and they're instantly blowing up on you, oh, it's just, I don't know, I can't get past stuff like that. I'm, I'm very much like, if we're having a problem, I take time and then I wanna like have a discussion about it. I'm not just gonna like start flinging insults and stuff because you can't take those words back. Yes. And I hang on to that stuff because I'm like, I never said anything like that. Well, and sometimes you. what you say when you're angry is what you really mean. Yeah. So if you're if if you're saying those things to me when you're mad at me, are those things that you think about me all the time? Right. So it's like a double-edged sword because sometimes that's what you really mean and other times it's like not what you really mean yeah. but what you're just feeling in that moment before you're really looking at the whole situation. Mm -hmm. So it's just dangerous. So I feel like if you're in a fight or something, like always, if you feel that like rage, like take time before you say anything. Take a step back. Because it'll make the difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said you were in a six year relationship? Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, so I started dating him when I was 15. <laughs> like high school sweethearts. Yeah, all through college. college. It ended after college actually, which was horrible timing right before COVID. Oh my god. Um, that was probably so good for like finding yourself though. Yeah. That was like and, perfect timing. Yeah, and that's kind of probably how I'll answer that question is like the biggest thing that I learned the hard way is a lot of the times whether it's a relationship or trying to figure out who you want to find, mm -hmm. it's from within where the, the problem stands and a lot of people don't want to recognize that and it's it's a hard pill to swallow but like yeah even if you get because in the past year i've experienced very toxic relationships um and even in that situation yes you're essentially the victim but you got yourself there why yeah because of something was off internally maybe you're looking for the wrong thing maybe you didn't know what you wanted mm -hmm. and if you knew what you wanted then you wouldn't have found yourself with that toxic person 100 percent. i think that's such a big one nobody wants to take accountability i think mm -hmm. that's a huge problem in dating now yeah is you like to see what's wrong with that other person but you don't like to look at yourself and see right. what you're doing wrong and mm -hmm. that's how you get yourself into so many bad situations that are not meant for you I think that things that are like red flags at the beginning that you try and ignore, they typically end up being the reason you break up at the end. It's just like worse by that point. For sure, because you're so attached and it's hard to remove yourself at that point. Yeah. When you saw it in the beginning and you just ignore it and it should be the reason you break up anyway. Yeah. So that's a good one. So I think something really important that people talk about a lot, but it's not as easy as it seems, is not being so available. And I don't think that means that you need to play games like, oh, I'm gonna wait three days to text this person back mm -hmm. or you know, whatever. But it's like, if you just meet someone, you're really into them and they're asking you to hang out, but maybe you already had plans. Canceling your plans to go hang out with that person, like don't do that. It's a bad it's, look. It's important for you to have your own life and your own friends and things that you care about and they should respect that. And it just makes them more excited to see you the next time. Exactly. Or don't respond to their texts instantly and sit there on your phone and wait for them to respond. <laughs> I know it's hard sometimes you get really excited about somebody that you are hanging out with or that mm -hmm. you just met but just like chill for a minute and like it just shows that you're a little bit more confident and like you're not so needy so yeah and you have your own life going on yeah same like thing you goes should for, be busy same thing goes for men too like you don't have to play all these games you don't have to come up with some like diabolical plan in your head of when you're going to text them back or 
you know, not texting them back for three days to make mm -hmm. them miss you. Like, it's not about that. It's just about having your own things going on yeah. and having your own life. Right. And if you already have those things, you shouldn't have to put too much thought no, into, like, when you're No, it doesn't need to be this, like, crazy thing. Yeah. It's insane. If you guys liked this video or found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be in the loop for when I release new content. If you haven't already, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Courtney Christine Ryan. I love connecting with all of you guys on there as well. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.